Hey folks, it's the Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. September, absolutely flown past. Soon be Christmas. Oops, promised myself I wouldn't mention the C word. Anyway, if you're interested in what's been going on in the world of motorcycles here in the UK for the month of September 2022, you're in the right place. Stick around, stay tuned. Let's do bike news. All right, as usual, loads of stuff been going on uh, this month. I've got uh, four copies of MCN that I've marked up with some stories that I thought might be of interest. Let's uh, go through those. And then at the end of the video, as usual, I've got some parish notices. So if you're interested in what's coming up on the channel and some other bits and pieces, stick around to the very end. I'll tell you that too. All right, let's crack on then. First paper and the first story. Baby RS arriving. Down here, tucked in the, in the bottom here, Kawasaki have released a video teasing a new model with a stomach-turning phrase, the Retrovolution is coming. Is that right? Yeah, Retrovolution. Yeah, not, not great for the marketing department there, but we kind of understand what they mean because what they're up to is this. Uh, it's expected the new bike will be a Z650 RS with Kawasaki adding a retro twist to the budget twin. If it looks half as good as the Z900 RS, a bike I've often said that I absolutely love the, the looks of, uh, it could offer an alt interesting alternative to Tramp Street Twins and Royal Enfield 650s. Expect more detail soon. So that one, I'm definitely looking forward to. I think um, bikes in the sort of 600, 650cc uh, area are perfect for the road, particularly if you're gonna get a retro bike, which typically uh, you're gonna kind of ride lazily around the lanes on a Sunday. I, I would anyway, I would argue that's probably their main purpose. Um, if Kawasaki are coming out with something that's uh, you know a good price, looks as good as the Z900 RS, then the 600 version or 650 version would be absolutely brilliant. So uh, there will be more on bike news about that as more uh, news is released. Stick around and stay tuned for that. Anyway, so that was just a quickie. Don't know if I can find a picture or anything of that but if I can I'll stick it on the screen but um, or will have done by now but uh, anyway I just like the sound of it right moving on uh, new Tiger on the horizon now this is interesting this is the long-awaited new Tiger 1200 from Triumph uh, again they've been teasing some pictures of this um, Triumph has started to release um, sort of press releases and, and little social media things when they talk about new bikes being in the final stages of testing and they show you these pictures of them sort of heavily disguised with lots of Triumph stickerage all over to sort of well, literally give you a tease. You can sort of see a bit of what the bike's about, but not fully. But anyway, they've been starting to do that with the 1200, which probably means this bike is imminent. Um, I don't know when they're gonna release it, but you know, in my mind, I'm thinking probably the next month we'll get some more details on this. Anyway, what have they said? Triumph have released a teaser showing test riders riding a brand new Tiger 1200 with the promise that the upcoming machine will be the new ultimate large capacity adventure ride. Now that is quite a claim, isn't it? Um, they've said it's significantly lighter than its closest competition. Now that is the key thing for me because the Tiger 1200 I think always looked a lovely bike and on paper it was a great bike, had great electronics uh, and everything but when you actually rode it it was as heavy as hell. Now I'm a, as you may know if you're a regular viewer, I've got a, um, a BMW R1200 GS which again on paper very similar to the 1200 Tiger, in fact it might even be slightly heavier but because it carries its weight low down with the boxer it makes it very easy to live with. You can move it around, the center of gravity is nice and low. The 1200 isn't like that, or certainly the current one isn't. Whenever I stopped on that bike or I got off, tried to wheel it around, it felt very, very heavy. Not a bike I could live with, I'm afraid. However, if they come up with um, what they're saying here with a much, much lighter version, this could be a winner. What else does it say here? Uh, MCN say, we'd expect a serious drop in weight, think 30 kilograms plus. It would definitely need to do that to um, you know, be significantly lighter than its closest competition as they're claiming. Um, uh, they're thinking, so the old XCA was 248 kilograms. They're thinking at least 30 kilograms off that, which would be good. Uh, it's clear there's a new engine. Peak power is likely to creep over 150 brake horsepower, which is kind of where these adventure bikes are going now, isn't it? Um, the XCA will likely be renamed Rally to match the 900, which would make great sense. I I found those, you know, the all the X's that they used to have in the model ranges was totally confusing. They've got rid of that now with the Tiger 900s. Let's call it a rally. That would make a lot of sense. So well done the marketing department if they do do that. They've ditched the 19 inch, 17 inch wheels in favor of 21 inch, 18 inch wheels um, for better handling on tricky terrain. Um, new suspension unit front and rear. Um, shaft drive remains, but it's been completely redesigned. Triumph have ditched the old Tiger 1200 single sided swing arm in favor of a more conventional twin spar design. That'll probably save some weight as well, I imagine. Uh, full reveal in the autumn, it says here. Well, here we go. September's just passed us by. This is sort of autumn, so expect a full reveal soon. If not, by the time you see this, I'm recording this uh, for broadcast on Wednesday morning. It's Monday morning at the moment. So uh, you never know, it might come out in the next couple of days and steal on with thunder. But more to come on that, I'm sure, soon. Can't wait to see what that's like. Let's hope they are true to the word, and it really is a class leader, because I think it could fly off the shelves. It looks good. It just needs to lose a load of weight. 
All right, this is interesting. Um, Buell back on track. Do you remember Eric Buell Racing? This is a, a brand that, um, that is, gets reborn every few years. Well, it seems like it's about to be reborn again, or it is being reborn again. Buell motorcycles are returning to full production once more, with the company well on the way to launching their first new bike, the 1190RX Hammerhead. Uh, and there's a picture of it here. And I have to say, it's a good looking motorcycle. Um, Liquid Asset Partners um, bought Eric Buell Racing and they've now um, bought the Buell name from Harley Davidson. Complicated this. So they're going to relaunch it, calling it Buell again, and they're going to start with this new hammerhead so it's properly back in production. Hang on one second, I've got a flickering light here. I'm going to give it a knock. Battery might be on its way out. I'm sorry if there's a flicker that's annoying you. It's annoying me. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, what I love about Buells is they always do interesting stuff engineering-wise, don't they? Now, the fact that other manufacturers don't copy it makes me think, I'm not sure whether it's actually successful or not. But for example, on this one, the new Hammerhead, they've gone for that bizarre um, brake design that they have where the uh, disc is attached to the outside of the wheel and the caliper sort of fits inboard. And I think in this case, it might be an eight pot caliper or something. Uh, let's see what it says here. Uh, yeah, an eight piston caliper on here. It must be flipping amazing at stopping, I would have thought. Uh, and also they do things like, you know, keeping the oil in the frame, which let's face it isn't a new technology that's been around for donkey's years. But uh, I don't know whether they'll do that on this model. But there's all sorts of little nice um, engineering touches that Buell do. So I'm looking forward to seeing those come back. Uh, no price yet, it says here. Um, expected in uh, 2023. So, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see how that story develops. We've been here before with Buell. Let's hope this one does make it to full production because it does look the biz, doesn't it? Okay, next story. Now this is, uh, this is interesting, Honda NT1100 to fill the VFR gap. This is something that a number of people have asked me in comments to my videos over the last month. Have I seen the new NT1100 and what do I think about it? So it's a new Sport Tourer from Honda. Now it seems like the sports touring um, sector is getting a bit of a uh, resurgence at the moment, doesn't it? With various bikes coming out in, in this sort of genre, which is great news as far as I've con I'm concerned. Did you see last week the new Suzuki? Uh, that looks incredible, the GSXS GT. Um, is it called the GSXS 1000 GT? Anyway, whatever. There'll be more details coming up on that in, in future videos, I'm sure. That looks really good. But in the meantime, Honda are also now teasing this one, or rather there's some um, information been leaked about the NT1100. Let's see what uh, MCN is saying. So the new NT1100 Sports Tourer has a parallel twin from the Africa twin. So they're, like all manufacturers do these days, they develop a new engine and then they use it in different genres of bike. Great idea. In this paint scheme actually it looks still looks pretty Africa twin S doesn't it um, the NT1100 name was trademarked earlier this year the NT1100 steps into the shoes of the VFR 800 as Honda's main middleweight sports tourer incredible isn't it that an 1100 cc bike is now regarded as a middleweight but there we go um, there's no official word from Honda but we'd expect the bike to hit dealers in spring with a circa 12 grand price tag so uh, yeah one to watch really looking forward to seeing this one don't actually like this paint scheme I don't know if this is a mock-up or what but um, I imagine it'll be an amazing bike. I'm a big Honda fan, as you know. Um, reliable, good value, nice bike. So looking forward to seeing that and how that compares to that new uh, Suzuki that we mentioned. So yeah, more Sport Tourers coming soon, which is great news. All right, um, MCN here, done one of their little comparisons. I love these. Uh, here they've pitted two top sports bikes. They're both 30 grand plus each. So the Panigale V4 SP versus the BMW M1000RR. I haven't ridden either of these bikes, I have to say. I just think, I love sports bikes. Who doesn't love sports bikes? I love them to look at, I love that they exist. I'm not sure I love ownership particularly. I do have a sports bike. I've got a Panigale myself, the, um, the 899, which I just think is a beautiful, beautiful looking bike. In fact, I think the 899 looks better than this. I'm not saying it's better, obviously. This is clearly the technology has moved on in the five, six years since the 899 came out. Um, or it might be more than that now, probably seven years. But uh, yeah, the new the V4 SP looks incredible, but not as good as the original. I think the M1000 now from BMW, now that they've gone all symmetrical, I think it looks just as good. Um, and I suspect, personally, that the BMW is possibly the better bike to live with. Very smooth to ride with, um, you know, more comfortable position, uh, etc. based on having ridden just the standard S1000RR. Anyway, let's see what... Um, what MCN say having ridden both bikes. And this is from Nevesy, my favorite road tester on MCN. He says, the Ducati Panigale V4 uh, is knee knockingly beautiful. I would agree with that. Um, insanely fast and actually moves the game on by being easier to get on with than the base S or R models. That's incredible. So the top spec bike, easier to live with than the lower spec, incredible. It's harder to justify the big money on the M1000RR. Interesting. Uh, the good news with the S1000RR M package, oh, oh the good news is the S1000RR M package is every bit as exciting on track and capable on the road, and it's 10 grand cheaper. 
than the M1000RR. So that's interesting. So uh, they've given the Panigale 5 out of 5 and the BMW 4 out of 5, which uh, I'm surprised by. I thought it might have gone the other way, but there we go. If you're you know, into shaving tenths of seconds off your lap times, then the Panigale is the one to go for. If you want to ride a bike on the road, maybe get the cheaper S1000RR is what uh, MCN is saying. There we go, interesting. All right, that's the first paper. Next one. Uh, five stories to go through here. Can't remember what I've highlighted. Uh, first thing, oh yeah, this is interesting. A new um, classic from Royal Enfield. Again, this has been, there's lots of news been about this for a while. In fact, I think it might already be released in India. This is called the Classic 350. They've taken the looks, you remember the old Classic 500 they discontinued, which looked great, but was a pretty, well, I'll say characterful bike to ride. It was very lumpy. I didn't actually enjoy riding. It was too thumpy. Whereas this bike with the new 350 single from the Meteor, promises to be an amazing bike to ride. I rode the Meteor and I was really impressed with the single uh, cylinder engine in that. I said I thought that was the best single cylinder engine I'd ever ridden with. So that, with the looks of the classic, I think Royal Enfield could be onto an absolute winner here. Let's see what uh, MCN have said. So Royal Enfield have unveiled a renewed version of the Classic 350 for the Indian market. Uh, with the promise of a shiny new one for us early next year. Uh, the Classic gains a new air and oil called 349cc from the Meteor, as I said. Uh, the Classic retains a well-loved thump from the exhaust. That's part of the appeal of these, they sound good. Um, there's no pricing info yet, but Royal Enfield have said they expect it to be in the dealers by the spring. Well, you would expect it to be priced less than the 650 Interceptor, given this is a 350. Uh, I think the Interceptor's, well, it's sub six grand at the moment, so maybe this one will be nearer the five grand mark. If you can get this 350 Classic for five grand, this is going to be a winner. If I had room in a garage, I would definitely have one. And the paint schemes look lovely as well. If you look on the internet, you can see the what's been launched into the Indian market. They do look amazing. There's something about the rear mudguard I'm not too sure about. A little bit too chunky for my liking, but again, could make the basis for some great custom jobs. Uh, you could make a maybe a bobber or something out of it. But actually, I think the standard bike looks pretty darn good. So really, really interested to see what this is like when it comes out. I think this could be a really good Sunday afternoon rider, and I think it's going to, you know, it's going to appeal to a lot of uh, a lot of riders. I think they could have come up with a blinder here. All right, moving on. Boost for baby blade. Oh yes, so these are the Honda 500 um, series bikes. So I'm a big fan of these. I rode these. I think it was last year. So we're talking here. Uh, CB 500R, the naked CB 500F, the sports bike, and the CB uh, 500. X, which is the sort of um, off-roady type bike, which is the most recent one I rode of these, and it's probably my favourite of the pack. Brilliant, brilliant bikes, these. Again, they're not super hairy, they're not super expensive, they're just proper practical motorcycles. They'll be reliable, they'll do you a great turn, and they don't cost the earth to buy or to run. Anyway, they've all had a bit of an update. Let's have a see what's happened. So for the CB500R, that's had the biggest change with the addition of uh, 41 mil shower, separate function big piston forks uh, with associated new triple trees. Those are those clever forks where one does rebound, one does damping, or what is a technical thing, but each fork leg uh, has a separate function as the name implies which is clever stuff um, the system controls the damping with one leg and the spring mechanism in the other there we go so I should have read on the rear shock has also received a new setup the swing arm for all three bikes has been uh, made lighter apparently um, the 500R and 500F have new lighter five spoke wheels new 296 mil discs which are now acted on by radially mounted twin piston Nissan calipers for improved feel uh, updated fuel injection improved torque delivery in the mid range um, new radiators um, uh, what else? And styling tweaks on all bikes. So basically, they were good bikes anyway, but they've made them even better. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting a 500, you might be able to get a, a bargain on the older ones or hang on a bit. Don't know when these are going to be out and about, but, um, you know, next year you're going to be able to get slightly upgraded ones. Great bikes, those, I think. All right, next. Hubless hot rod. Now, this is incredible. Now, occasionally I like to point out these um, sort of um, more esoteric motorcycles, like the Buell we talked about earlier, because this just is something different. It's an electric bike. I'm not a massive fan of electric bikes so far, but I do like it when they come up with something a little bit different. And this is one, look at this, it's got a rear hubless wheel uh, and it's very, very clever. So let me read you the highlights here. Hot from the continent comes the Verge TS, a hubless electric bike that could change the way we think about motorcycle design. Uh, when fed by, uh, power by the motor, the electromagnets in the rim repel each other, causing the outer portion of the rim to turn and drive the bike forward. The only disadvantage to the system is that it requires a wide rim and and that's a very rear wide tyre, so that's going to possibly mess up the handling. Although the wide rear tyres always look cool, don't they? Uh, there's no chain belt or gearbox to sap power, so Verge, or Verge, Verge, say it's a hugely efficient way of propelling the bike. Brilliant. Uh, the Hubless motor is able to generate 107 brake horsepower at an utterly insane 737 pounds feet of torque. So this is going to feel 
blisteringly fast when you wind it on from start where all the power will be available. Um, not sure about the looks of it. I do like that rear wheel technology though. I wonder if that will make it to, to more uh, electric bikes. The fact that it's super efficient without a train, without a chain um, is just, just amazing. What I, it's one of those things, you know, it's such a kind of an obvious thing when you think about it. Why didn't anyone do this before? So well done, Verge, 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 whatever they're called. This is uh, possibly one to watch. Um, it says here, uh, the TS will retail for approximately 21,000 pounds. So it's still a very expensive bike, but it is something different. Um, full color TFT, Olin suspension, Brembo brakes, BST wheels. Um, so the overall weight, 225 kilograms. Normally, electric bike is very, very heavy because of the battery. This one is not in the realms of the ridiculously heavy. It says here, DC charge time will top it off in 40 minutes, or if you push for time, or 15 minutes on a DC charge will add 60 miles in range in 15 minutes. So sounds like it could be practical too. Electric bikes, no matter what you think of them, they, they're getting better and better all the time. It won't be many years before these are properly competing with internal combustion bikes. So uh, let's see how that all turns out. Here we go, Mini Moto GP replica. <laughs> the new RC390 from KTM. I smirk there because I remember what I thought about this when I first saw the picture. They've done it again, haven't they, KTM? They can't, I don't know what it is. They just don't seem to be able to design a good looking bike. And I know this is very subjective and I know some people will absolutely love it and I'm sure it'll fly off the shelves. I have seen some ride reviews of this somewhere um, and it's being universally praised. So I'm sure it's a very good bike, but I personally, can't get by the looks of this. The angular looks, the funny front end where it's all sort of perspex and you can see through. I wouldn't buy this just because of the looks. Sorry, KTM. It is a personal thing. Some people love it. Fill your boots. Anyway, what does it say here? The new bike immediately grabbing the attention of tear away teens thanks to MotoGP inspired bodywork said to mimic the firm's RC16 Grand Prix racer. Uh, Euro 5 friendly, 373 liquid cooled single cylinder producing 43 brake horsepower. Uh, tech updates include a full color TFT dash which can be connected to your smartphone with the KTM MyRide app. I have to say, there's not much about that that really appeals to me. <laughs> Again, I apologize KTM, it's just, it's just obviously it's not aimed at me, I'm not the target market, maybe youngsters will love it, I hope so anyway for KTM's sake. Right, last story in here. Imitation game. Now we mentioned this bike, the, the Vogue 500 DS, in I think it was the bike last month's bike news. This uh, is a bike that looks um, a sort of a copy of the Honda CB500X, so they've done a direct comparison to see how they compare. Now I said, I'm always saying ignore Chinese bikes at your peril because they're getting better and better, I think. And I think the Vogue looks really good. It's 5,000 quid, uh, but a pound. Uh, the Honda, 6,249, so significantly cheaper than the Honda. One of those things though, isn't it? If you bought it, and even if you loved it, would you in the back of your mind be thinking, oh, I wish I bought the Honda? It is significantly cheaper, and I think it, I think it possibly even looks better than the Honda, but with no proven tra track record, it's a bit of a leap of faith, isn't it, to buy one, I don't know. Um, somebody buy one and let us know how you get on with it. Let's see what the verdict was from MCN. They both, they both look good, actually. I think these are both eminently practical bikes. So, uh, Mike Armitage says here, as a budget do-it-all, the Vogue is definitely tempting. It's easy to ride, very well equipped, performs well, and is great for long cross-city commutes or breezy forays into the countryside. Uh, it's a lot of machine for five grand. Value and cheap aren't the same thing, though. That's a very good point. Um, the Honda costs 12.50 more, but it has a superior ride, performance, finish, economy, and overall feel. I mean, it's the better value bike, and that's the important thing, isn't it? The 500DS is a good 5K bike, but the CB500X is a great 6k bike there we go that's an excellent summary i think um they've given the honda five out of five they've given the vogue four out of five um so i guess it comes down to how much money you've got to spend but if you have got six grand and you're in the market for one of these bikes they're very much saying go for the honda uh, which seems a reasonable summary Alrighty, how are we doing halfway through hope you're still with me just have a swig of me water TMF mug, of course, available on the website, www.themissandoflyer.com. All sorts of stuff's there. You can get this, uh, this shirt, which I haven't worn for a while, other t-shirts, sweatshirts, key rings, mugs, um, hoodies, uh, neck doodah buffs, all there, all sorts of prices. Go and check it out, www.themissandoflyer.com. There you go, little advert for you. Moving on. Right, first story in this paper. All the fun of the fairing. Now, this is interesting. This was all over social media a couple of weeks ago. This is the new Triumph Speed Triple RR that broke cover. A sort of a half fared bikini fairing, maybe, version of the Speed Triple. Um, very, very interesting looking bike, and I can't quite make my mind up about it. I don't know whether I like this or not. Well, I do. I do like it. I definitely like it. But do I love it? I'm not sure. It's got a lot of carbon. Um, it's, it's 
an interesting design. It's a departure for, for Triumph. It's not really a retro, but it's got some sort of retro vibes about it. It's a thoroughly modern bike based on the new Speed Triple RS uh, that um, I really enjoyed riding uh, up the hill at Goodwood uh, recently. Uh, and also I borrowed one for a while. It's a great bike. I'll stick a link in the corner to my uh, review of that bike if you've not seen it. Um, but the thing is with the Speed, a couple of things here, with the Speed Triple RS, when that came out, I clearly remember Triumph saying, People ask them, is there going to be uh, another version of this uh, with better specs, Olin suspension, all that sort of thing? And they clearly, well, actually, maybe the RS does have Olin suspension. Anyway, they said, this is the speed triple we're building. This is the only one. This is the top of the line. We think this is the bike that people want. Heavily implying, in fact, I think stating there would be no others. So if I'd put an order down on a speed triple and then this came out and this appealed to me, I'd be a bit miffed with Trump saying that the other speed triple was the only one they're going to make. There we go. They're within their rights to make whatever models they want, of course. But I just think that's a bit... A bit naughty of Trump to have said that there won't be any others. They could have hedged their bets but and not said it quite so openly. Because clearly this was on the drawing board at that stage. Uh, so that's that. And then the other thing is, although it looks beautiful, um, they've taken, they've changed the riding position to make it more, more of a sports bike feel. So one of the appeals to me of the Speed Triple RS is the fact that it's got the power and the performance, but you're, you're sitting upright, it's comfortable. Uh, and for older geezers like me, that's very important. This one, you're going to be leaning over a bit. I don't suppose it's an extreme sports bike position, but it is nonetheless more sporty. So that's taken away one of the appeals of the, of the Speed Triple for me. Does the fact that it looks nicer, arguably, and that's a, you know, that's a, again a subjective point, I think it does look nicer personally, does that make up for the riding position? I don't know. But something that's in my mind is, do you remember that BMW, you know when they brought out the um, R9T series, they had the R9T sports bike version, I can't remember what it's called now, the R9T Sport probably, that was a beautiful looking bike with a curved retro looking fairing, looked really beautiful. I did a review on that years ago, I loved that bike but it was a very extreme riding position, I could not live with it personally, um, but it looked brilliant. But anyway, I think uh, others probably um, agreed with me because they took it, they withdrew it from sale, um, so it obviously didn't sell very well. I just hope that this doesn't happen for Triumph, I think it's one of those bikes everybody's going to say yes I like the look of it, but nobody actually buys it because the, the riding position maybe is a bit extreme, I don't know, I haven't ridden it, I've not sat on it, I don't know how extreme it is, Trump is saying it's not that extreme, we'll see. So I hope to have a go on one and, and I'll let you know, but those are the two things in my mind. Uh, is it? Have you taken away one of the essences of the speed triple that made it so good by making it more racy? Um, and um, also, you know, it's quite, I'm not sure, I have to wait to see in the flesh as to whether I really love the looks or not. I definitely like it. Anyway, a couple of bits I've pointed, uh, highlighted here uh, that MCN have said. So half-fed cafe racer style sports bike based on the speed triple RS. 178 brake horsepower, 1160cc triple, slick looking top fairing with a single round headlamp. All good. Uh, the flat bars of the RS make way for clip-ons for a more canted forward and aggressive riding position and the foot pegs have moved slightly further back as well. And I think that might be an error. Um, if they could make it look like this without doing that, they might have been still been on to a winner. Uh, adjustable Olins on the naked version are swapped for semi-active units on the fair bike, so it's got more sophisticated electronics. Pirelli Supercourser SPV3 tyres replaced the RS's Metzler Racetex. Um, the Speed Triple 1200RR will cost 7950 in white or 18200 in this red. So you're paying a bit of a premium over the standard bike for this. We'll see how it goes. We'll um, hopefully get a ride on one when they come out. I don't suppose they'll be out for a while yet. It says on sale in 2022. So I imagine it's going to be springtime next year before I get a ride on one. Um, so, you know, we'll remain open-minded. It certainly looks nice. Is it actually going to be a practical proposition to ride? We'll wait and see. Okay, next up. The man from Mandalo, Mandelo, I think this looks interesting. This is, I don't talk much about Moto Guzzies or Guzzi, Moto Guzzies on the channel, but here's one that I think looks quite nice. And again, it's one of those um, sports tourer bikes. There's more and more of these coming out now that bikes that you can ride on, ha have a good time, don't make any pretensions about being off-roaders. So uh, Guzzi have given little away about the bikes, bar its name, and that they'll release it in full at the Arkema Trade Show later this year. The bike is powered by a brand new 1000cc water-cooled V-twin, uh, which is a departure, I think. I don't think they've done that before. We'd expect around 130 brake horsepower. Uh, new single-sided swing arm with traditional shaft drive. The new Mandelo has been aimed squarely at the sports touring market with special consideration given to rider comfort. Uh, I like that. An upright riding position uh, and an adjustable screen. Uh, but the wind beating tech extends further, not just to clever little heat shields, but behind the headers, there's a pair of active aero wings either side of the tank that can be deployed outward to, to divert wind away from the rider. Clever stuff. I have to say, I don't necessarily find wind blast a big problem on bikes, but they thought about it. Maybe it's something we <coughs> didn't realise we needed. I imagine behind that V-twin, you've got some warmth going on you as well. I imagine it's a lovely bike um, to sit on for hours. It looks comfortable and I like the design of it. It's just, it just looks a bit different to anything else out in the market. So we'll see how that one develops. I think I've got a bit more about that a bit later. 
Oh, a letter here I just wanted to point out. Um, I'm always saying how good my guardsman uh, security barrier in my garage is. Um, Image 4 Security are actually a sponsor of the channel, so you may not believe me when I say that, but there's a letter here from somebody called Nick Brown. Today, the lads from Image 4 Security came all the way into deepest Cumbria and fitted their guardsman barrier into my garage. It's the best investment I've made to keep my bike safe. I don't usually do recommendations, but if you want to keep your bike safe, I can honestly think of no better way of doing it. So there we go. Don't take my word for it. And by the way, I got my barriers before they sponsored the channel. It's, that's how we got hooked up. Um, Nick Brown thinks they're pretty good too, so just couldn't whip by the um, the letters page without mentioning that. So thank you Nick for saying that, and I'm sure Image 4 Security are pleased too for you saying that. Next up, upping the game. Uh, here we go. Um, this is the new Speed Twin that's come out. Um, we'll have a look at the verdict in a minute. Now I'm getting one of these to borrow in December, I think, from Triumph. Um, and what I want to do is uh, do a direct comparison between this, the new updated Speed Twin, versus my original Speed Twin. I think um, mine's a 2019, so it's been around for a couple of years now. That was the original bike when it came out. It's now had a bit of a refresh. They've given it um, a new exhaust, some new brakes, a um, bit of a change with paintwork. Um, some internal changes to the engine uh, and we need to see whether that all adds up to making it a better bike they've changed the front end look a little bit as well it's uh, looking a little bit less retro a little bit more modern but it's still obviously a retro bike let's see what the verdict is um, from MCN oh actually there's a few bits here so the new monoblock brakes are possibly a touch too much of a good thing the combination of Brembo's finest calipers and master cylinder and braided lines as standard I mean there's a little there's little lever travel creating an on off sensation that's not that's not a good thing is it I'll be much happier to see the new bike on the same Pirelli Rosso Corsa tyres the old model carried as they had more more than enough dry grip while also being considerably safer in the damp than the Metzler Racetech RRs that it now comes on not sounding good so far. Triumph claimed that the updates to the HP engine have boosted not only its power but its mid-range, something a dyno test MCN ran uh, disagrees with. Oh dear, I'm suspecting that, uh, who is this person? Uh, John R is not a fan then. Uh, the new motor is left lacking when compared to the old one between 2500 and 4500, which shows up during the road ride. Very surprising, obviously these things are done as improvements, so if uh, a reviewer is saying that actually it's harmed the bike, that is not a good thing. I'll reserve judgment till I actually see it myself and ride it myself. The overall summary then here, although I'd like to see more suitable tyres fitted with the 2021 Speed Twin, Triumph have achieved the goal of giving this sporty modern classic a bit more spice without detracting from its overall fun factor. It's not perfect, but it is improved, and yet as just as much fun as before, although it would be even better with that, with that mid-range hole filled in, so hmm, interesting. I'm not. I, I'm not actually a very good bike reviewer. I can't necessarily feel where there's, you know, holes in the torque curves and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see whether I actually notice that as a as a bog standard rider as opposed to a, a skilled tester that uh, Mike Armitage is. Oh, and then here we go. There's more on the new RC390 uh, that we talked about earlier. Um, not sure whether to say anything else on this because we talked about it just now, don't we? As I said, I don't like the looks of it. And you can see more of this transparent screen arrangement, which is the thing that offends my eye the most. Might really appeal to you. Uh, the verdict from Chris Moss here, who's tested it. Um, KTM's level of, that's Mossy from uh, 44 Teeth, obviously does a bit of freelance work these days. Anyway, well-known journalist. Uh, the KTM's level of spec and finish and that expected 5,500 arson price puts it well ahead of its rivals. Kawasaki's Ninja 400, Yamaha's R3, Honda's 500R models offer A2 license holders alternative options, but they just can't match the KTM RC390's equipment levels. That's what Chris Moss says, or Mossy says. Um, okay, so on paper, uh, maybe it's better. Um, I still would have one of those other bikes over it because I don't like the looks, but that is a subjective thing. But it is under 6K. I mean, great value. You can't argue with that. Uh, due with dealers around February next year, it'll cost 5500 estimated. For that money, there's a surprisingly good quality feel to the Austrian bike. There's real attention to detail. High spec components make it feel much more expensive and accomplished. You have to ride it to realise just how capable it is. So maybe I'm being completely unfair. Maybe it's a really excellent bike, but... Uh, whether I'll get to ride it, I'm not sure. Um, certainly I'm not. It's not one on the top of my list to have a go on for the reasons I mentioned earlier, unfortunately. All right, last newspaper before we get on to parish notices. Uh, I won't keep you much longer, mainly because the camera will probably overheat if I do. Oh, here we are. Uh, Guzzi. I mentioned the new uh, Motor Guzzi earlier. Guzzi, Motor Guzzi turns 100. Somebody tell me how to pronounce that. Is it Motor Guzzi? Motor Guzzi? Motor Guzzi? Motor Guzzi, perhaps. I'm sure an Italian can tell me phonetically how I should be saying that properly because whenever I say Moto Guzzi, people have a go at me. Uh, is that right or wrong? Anyway, big changes ahead. So um, the revolutionary all-new liquid-cooled bike, uh, it says here the V100. So uh, it looks the same to me as the bike we just looked at. But anyway, uh, but yeah, revolutionary that it's got a liquid-cooled V-twin. They've not done that before. Um, 
what else does it say? Uh, still a shaft drive, transverse V-twin, new radiator, new shaft drive. We talked about all that earlier. But anyway, what it's talking about here, um, this particular one, it's called the V100 because it celebrates uh, 100 years um, of Moto Guzzi. Uh, and as part of that, they've unveiled a new um, banner uh, called Road to 2121, where owners Piaggio say the plan is to establish a new Moto Guzzi brand um, and as an, ex as an example of modern design. And to back that up, they, they're building new buildings at their factory as well, which looks all kind of modern and arty. Uh, it has radically shaped new structures with historic factory buildings and green spaces. Looks set to offer Gutsy an ex exciting and prosperous future. So uh, yeah, not just the new bike coming then, but new factory as well. Sounds like new money going in from uh, Piaggio. Um, excellent, well, let's hope, let's look forward to that. I mean, it looks great, doesn't it? Green and gold, what a winner of a combination. Lovely looking bike. Uh, more here on the Tiger 1200 as well. We talked about that earlier. This is obviously this paper is for four weeks hence from the previous one. Triumph Tiger 1200 will get the T plane crank and firing order first used in the Tiger 900. Um, don't know if that's good name, good news or not to you. Lots of people say to me that they don't like the um, T plane crank. They prefer the old triple with its smoother delivery uh, because some people have complained that the 900 is a bit vibey once you get going. That might be the case with the 1200 if they're doing the same thing. Personally, I've never noticed it on the 900, but as I said before, I'm not a particularly sensitive rider. Maybe I just haven't got a you know a sensitive backside. But anyway, we'll see. Um, Triumph have also unleashed a Tiger 900 Rally Pro Bond Edition. A little picture down here in black and gold. It looks excellent in that colour scheme, actually. Although I have to say, for me, as much as I am a Bond fan and I love 007 and all that, I'm not sure I want to buy a bike with 007 plastered all over it. It just seems a bit childish to me. I don't know. Somebody's bound to buy a limited edition, so maybe they go up in value. But I certainly wouldn't go out my way to buy a 007 branded one, particularly if there's a premium. So it's got so the new 900 gets all black paint job with gold 007 decals, blacked out components, a 007 start-up screen. Um, our exhaust heated seat, that's good. Uh, Michelin Anarchy wild tyres to fit, and it will cost 3k more than the Rally Pro. There's no way I'd spend three grand more uh, on that bike. Although it does look nice, but um, I want to do away with the 007 on the tank. I'll keep the, the, the rest of the gold bits look good. Um, what do you think about that? Is it just me, or does it seem a little bit childish to be doing things like this? Next, there'll be a Superman edition or something, or a, or a Harry Potter version. I don't know. Uh, doesn't work for me, but you know. I'm not a marketing person. I'm sure they, those are clever people at uh, Triumph. All right, next up. Uh, what have we got here? Oh, the new, this R1. It's not a new R1, but uh, Yamaha have revealed some new paint schemes. I think across the board, actually, but the R1 in this paint scheme, I think, looks absolutely brilliant. Yamaha have unveiled this fabulous retro race livery, uh, which will be available on all R-series road-going sports bikes for 2022. It marks the 60th anniversary of their entry into motorsport. Yamaha have decided to offer the scheme on the 2022 um, R1, R7, R3, and R125 bikes. And it just shows you, doesn't it, that paint makes so much difference, doesn't it? I mean, the R1's a good looking bike anyway. Uh, probably due for, an, for a bit of an upgrade soon, I think, because it feels like it's been around for a while in this form now, doesn't it? But this new paint scheme just gives it a whole new look, and I think it looks absolutely excellent. I think those will fly off the shelves, personally. Getting interested in your view, this is all a matter of taste, and this is just my opinion, of course, so don't take it to heart if you disagree with what I'm saying. Okay, nearly done. Uh, the Flying Dutchman. Now, this is hilarious. I do like to feature occasionally these um, these bikes that people have made. Now, somebody here, a Dutch guy, has uh, taken, is, in fact, he's called Willem Heiber. Heiber? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Willem. He's taken a uh, BMW K1600, the big six-cylinder touring bike, flagship bike, and he's tried to make it into a sort of a GS-type bike. Why on earth would you do that? I don't know, but he has done it. He's uh, What he's done is he, he said he wanted the handling and litheness and looks of a GS, but with a turbine-like turbine -like power of the inline six K1600 engine. Uh, so he's custom built the frame, he's lengthened the wheelbase, he's changed and sharpened the steering geometry. He's opted for a 19 inch, inch front wheel. Um, he's, uh, and it says here, it only weighs 310 kilograms fully fueled. Now that may be a big saving over the K1600, but it's still hardly a lightweight, is it? Um, he said, although it's heavy, it's smooth and easy to ride. Yeah. <laughs> what do you make of that? I love that people that do this stuff exist. Um, it'd be fun to have a go on it, but you imagine taking that off-road. I'm not sure he's planning to take it off-road. He hasn't got knobbly tires on it or anything. I'm not even sure he's achieved a great look of it, to be honest. I think I might prefer the original K1600, but more power to uh, Willem's elbow and well done for doing it. I mean, it looks sort of factory, to be fair. What do you make of that one? Right, last story before we go on to parish notices. 
Uh, Air today, gone tomorrow, just a quickie to highlight this, the Honda CB1100, a bike that has sort of passed me by, and as you've gathered, I'm a fan of retro bikes. And this Honda just looks epic, doesn't it? But sadly, because of the way that emissions rules are going, Euro 5 and all that, this one's gonna be going soon. Honda have revealed that they're gonna be producing a final edition of the CB1100 to debut soon in Japan. Since the machine doesn't meet Euro 5 emissions rules with no direct replacement on the horizon, it's also set, set to disappear from the showrooms this side of the world. Such a shame. Uh, again, maybe it didn't sell well, I don't know, otherwise they would be doing something to keep it in production, wouldn't they? But I think it looks properly retro uh, and would love to have had a go on one. Uh, maybe I'll still get a chance to do so somehow. I don't know if they bring out a final edition, maybe on the Sweet Talk Honda into letting me have a go. But I imagine with four cylinders, it's probably silky smooth to ride. Um, you know, would that be preferable to the Z900 RS? I don't know, but uh, it's going soon, which is a real shame. Alrighty. That's it for bike news. Let's come on to a few parish notices. For those of you that are regulars on the channel, a um, few bits and pieces just to let you know about what's coming up, etc. cetera. Um, oh, must just say, don't forget, if you wanna to go to the ABR Festival next year, which is on between the 24th and the 26th of June, it's a great thing. I went to it last year. I'll be going to it again uh, next year, so I'll see you there if you're going. At the moment, you can get early bird discounted tickets uh, from the ABR Festival website. I'll put a link below in the description uh, uh, of the website, and here's what the website looks like so you come to know you've come to the right place. Currently, you can get 30 quid off the weekend tickets, but if you use the code TMF5, um, you can get an additional 5% off that as well. So um, if you haven't got your tickets yet and you want to come along and you want to come and say hello because I'll be there all weekend, I think, then uh, TMF5, when you check out for your ABR tickets, as I say, check out the website, link below, uh, and you can get that and I'll see you there. Um, in terms of what's coming up in the next uh, month, um, don't forget, I've got a slightly new, as of the 15th of September, I've changed the way I upload my videos. I now do them on Wednesdays. So every Wednesday, you, I guarantee you will get a new video from the Bissenden Flyer. So Wednesday's the day. And then occasionally, I'll do an extra bonus Saturday one. If I've got too much content, which I normally have, then I'll stick up a video on a Saturday as well. And that's what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. I know it's caught a few of you out. I've changed the time that I've published them a bit as well. I did one on a Saturday at 6.15. Didn't do very well. I've gone back to publishing in the morning again at 7.15. So from now on, Wednesday's 7.15 is the time to look out for new videos from me. If you've not subscribed or hit the notification bell, not very many people get notifications of my videos going up, but that's when you can expect to see them. Anyway, coming up, at long last, I should have, in the next month, I haven't got it yet, but I'm confident it's coming soon, hopefully I'm picking it up on Friday, the new, uh, my custom Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 is complete. It looks fantastic, I've seen pictures of it. Some of you may have seen pictures too, because somebody did put a video on the internet about it. Anyway, that's gone now. I will be doing a reveal video, uh, uh, my reveal video, uh, on that bike as soon as I get my hands on it. So that's coming soon, much uh, anticipated. Cannot wait to show you my new Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. It's been away for 10 months in the making, so, and it's looking brilliant, I have to say. Um, there's gonna be uh, my first look video of the new V-Strom uh, 1050. That was uh, not relaunched, but had a big revamp for 2021. I've got that bike at the moment. I'm making a number of videos on that. A number of people have asked me, can I have a look at the new V-Strom? So that's what we'll be doing first video those will be coming up my first ride uh, i've got a video about the triumph t120 which um i actually recorded ages ago uh, and in fact it's annoying because it was like a month before triumph announced this year that they were doing some upgrades to the t120 but anyway that's coming up so it's the sort of previous t120 that's one from not the archives because you've never seen that video before it was from this year but earlier in the year so no smart alex need to say oh winter's come early to the uk because it was recorded last winter right that's coming up um and i've got a number of um Comp sort of extra bonus Saturday videos, uh, as I mentioned. I don't want to say what they are because I might swap them around. The whole point of me having that flexible Saturday slot uh, is so that I, if I haven't got anything, I won't put it up. But if I've got something that I think you're going to like, I can just stick it up on a Saturday. So those are coming up as well. Um, must say, as ever, thank you to my sponsors, uh, Lightlock, here they are, Lightlock, Monimoto, uh, Image4 Security, who do the security barriers, Canary Motorcycle Tours, back up and running, going to the Canary Islands very soon, going to be making some tour videos, hopefully, uh, out there, um, providing nothing changes covid wise but i'm hoping also uh, that mrs fly is going to come with me and get to do some riding as well on the 125 out there so stay tuned if you're a new rider or a lady rider there's going to be more uh, coming soon from them custom fit guards of course that make the earplugs that i wear um speedo angels of course my longest sponsor they make excellent uh, screen protectors at great prices for your motorcycle uh, monimoto did i mention them they do the um the security tracking devices that i'm a big fan of uh, and light lock that make the very lightweight but very secure um, motorcycle locks that i use on all my tours Again, links below to all those below, and in many cases, I can get your money off. So check out the links, go onto a PC, uh, have a look um, below the description on my videos, and you can get discounts on many of those items. So thank you to those guys, as ever. And of course, thank you to my patrons and members who continue to uh, 
support the channel. Without you guys, I couldn't do this stuff. So uh, do keep hitting the subscribe button, the likes and all that, because um, that does uh, that does help uh, with how things are going. So there we go, that's it. Um, look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget, leave comments on anything um, you agree or disagree with below, or if you think I've missed anything key, because I love to read them, and I try and respond to as many as I possibly can. All right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Flyer. Cheerio.